Hey guys, and welcome to this week's episode of D3 Live. So today I'm going to be talking about the Motorola Core tablet. Now, the Motorola Zoom was the very first tablet that was launched with Android 3.0 Honeycomb. It does look like Google is going to be doing the same thing with Motorola with the Motorola Core. So what we do expect with the Core is that it will be the very first tablet to launch with the new Android ice cream sandwich. Uh, now, that delicious name definitely will equate to some pretty cool upgrades. Uh, now, we haven't seen the full version of ice cream sandwich, so I'm going to not talk too much about that as opposed to the tablet itself. Uh, but it does look like Motorola will be getting it first, and the Core should be the very first tablet that is launched with Ice Cream Sandwich. Alright, so let's talk a little bit about the tablet itself. Now, pretty much all tablets these days, well, pretty much all of them across the board, are powered by dual-core processors. Uh, in the case of Android, they're pretty much all just the same Tegra 2 processor. Now, this is a dual-core 1 GHz CPU, very, very fast for you know, a phone or a tablet or anything like that. However, with combined with Honeycomb, it can be a bit slow sometimes. So, you know, sometimes it can be really, really speedy, uh, but on occasion it can lag and just not, not be quite perfect. So instead of having to redo Android and do all kinds of different things to optimize performance, it looks like they're going to do it a much, much easier way, which is just going to be adding a lot more power. One other change from the core, as opposed to something like the Zoom, is the fact that it will have a 4 by 3 aspect ratio. So this is very similar to the iPad and the iPad 2. And what this means is that as opposed to the Zoom, which was a very long screen, which is nice for watching movies and stuff, but sometimes it can be a little bit unwieldy to carry around and hold and everything, it does look like the Core will have a more standard 4x3 screen resolution. Uh, so while it, like, it won't be quite as good for movies and whatnot, uh, but it will be nice for web browsing and a little bit more of a full screen experience. Anyway guys, for the second segment of D3 Live, I'll be taking live questions from everyone in the chat. As always, every episode of D3 Live is filmed in front of a live audience, as you guys can see here on Blog TV. So let's go ahead and just take a couple of questions. Um, is 3D a fad? 3D has been a fad for like 60 years now. <laughs> um, I think 3D is overblown right now. I think that everyone's like, oh, let's go do 3D, and then people are kind of like kicking back. Because there are a lot of downsides to 3D right now. Um, that said, I don't think 3D is ever going to go away. Like I said, 3D has been around for a very, very long time. Uh, in all kinds of different forms, and as you, if you kind of look back, you can see like it got really popular, and then it kind of fell off, and now it's getting really popular, and the technology is somewhat there, but I don't think the technology is entirely there. So I think 3D is going to start going back down, um, and once everything's glasses free, once there's a lot of 3D content, once a lot of this stuff is taken care of, I do think it will take off, and whether that's going to be in a year or 10 years, I don't know, but I do think 3D for now is a bit of a fad. I think it will be going away. Okay, I don't want to say, I think it will be cooling down a lot. I think a lot of this emphasis on 3D is going to uh, slacken off quite a bit. Uh, do I think quad core on the core will shorten the battery life or make it hot? Um, it's always a possibility, but I really don't think it'll be too bad. I mean, a lot of this is the fact that they build these chips that try to have the same power efficiency and in fact, a lot of times they try to build it better. So even though it does have four physical cores, it's going to be more powerful. That does not necessarily mean that it's going to just drain tons of battery life and kick off tons of heat because there are a lot of really cool tricks in the, the, everything that they could do. Now that said, we really haven't seen a whole lot. We've seen well, we've seen engineering samples. We've seen them show it off, but we actually haven't seen it in a tablet. So um, it very well may be worse on battery life. It may kick off a lot of heat, but we just don't know that yet. So I don't really want to say one way or the other. Um, but I would definitely give them the benefit of the doubt. I don't think that just because it's going to be powerful, it's going to be, you know, just make a extremely hot tablet and, you know, have like three minutes of battery life. I'm, I'll, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt on that one. Um, am I excited for AMD Bulldozer? Yeah, definitely. Um, I've been a big fan of AMD. I used to use their chips. Um, I use Intel now. But um, AMD definitely has a lot that they could go for with Bulldozer. And I'm excited. I think that there's a lot of potential there. Uh, but again, I haven't really seen a whole lot of It's still not out yet, so I'm definitely going to reserve judgment. But yeah, I am excited. I really am looking forward to what they have to offer with it. Um, why does the iPod Touch camera suck so much? Uh, well, I don't think it's horrible. I mean, in good light, it's not bad at all. Um, but it's a very, very small sensor. In fact, I've got mine right here. Um, I think one of the big things that they've talked about is that the iPod Touch is thin, right? And you can't put a big, bulky camera in there. So, as you can see here, it's a pretty small camera. Um, there's no autofocus or anything like that, and it's, well, I think 0.7 megapixels. It's not particularly great for, you know, taking pictures, but, um, I'm hopeful. I think that they will be doing some better things with the iPod Touch 5th generation. I definitely think just technology in general is always advancing. Stuff is always getting faster, better, you name it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, as far as why it's just not that great, I think it's just because they have to make a really thin camera in there, and there's just not a whole lot they can do, and obviously they don't want to 
you know, they, these cameras don't cost anything at all for them to make, so they want to keep the prices and everything down. But uh, hopefully, they will start to you know improve that with the next iPod Touch. Um, when do you think the optical drive will die out for good? Um, I give it another few years. Um, I think optical media for computers is going to be out just like uh, just like the floppy drive. I mean, I, I'll say that right now. Um, I've got an optical drive in my. Uh, computer. I built it a couple months ago or so. I've used it once to install Windows and I used it once to watch a DVD which looked terrible because it's a DVD. Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, optical drives are really not that necessary for a lot of people. I mean, sure, if you really are always doing Blu-rays or DVDs or CDs, uh, it can be kind of helpful, but um, on the whole of it, for computers, I don't really see the optical drive lasting for more than a few more years. I mean, for consoles and that kind of stuff, I definitely can see it hanging around, but um, for the most part, I just don't see a whole lot of point to optical media and computers right now. Um, 